Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the Amazon Fire HD10 tablet. This is the 2021 model which is the latest version at the time of recording. I have the base configuration with 32GB of storage and it costs around $150. US The device is made out of plastic and aluminum silicate glass. It feels pretty solid in the hand and isn't too heavy at 456 grams. There's a 10.1 inch Full HD display with 224 pixels per inch. I think it's a decent display since the colors are vibrant and the brightness levels are good too. Paired with the dual speakers, it's great for content consumption. Here's a quick display and audio test. The tablet is powered by an octa-core processor with 3GB of RAM. I'll display the specs on the screen. This chip is good enough to handle basic tasks, but I wouldn't expect it to do any heavy gaming or productivity tasks. So far, I haven't experienced any overheating with this device. For the performance test, I want to show you a few games that handles most 2D games fine with no issues, like the Chuzzle 2, Plants vs Zombies, and Class of Clans. Let's open Class of Clans just to see how long it takes to load up the game now it's still a black screen okay there we go starting to load it normally takes a few seconds until the game is fully loaded so let's just give it a bit there we go we're in our game and as you can see no issues everything's very smooth and you can play normally now it does struggle with more graphically intensive games such as 3d games like sky so let me show you what that looks like but at this point we're really pushing the tablet to its limit since it isn't designed for games like this now i want to show you what the performance looks like anyway so you'll have an idea of what to expect technically you can play sky but it's not going to be the smoothest experience and i'll show you what i mean now if we go over to our menu on the top right, let's give it a while to load, okay we're in. If we go over to our menu, you'll see that we're on the lowest graphic settings now. So we have the energy saving mode and even with the lowest graphic settings, it will still stutter here and there as you just saw. So not for playing 3D games, I'd highly recommend getting a more powerful tablet. But if you're into playing 2D games like Class of Clans, maybe Terraria, Plant vs Zombies, and other simple games, then this is great. Just don't try to play anything else like uh, Sky or maybe Genshin Impact. This is what the camera quality from the main sensor looks like. I'm going to take a photo over here and display it under the screen so you can see it. Then let's flip it around and go to our front camera. Take another photo. There you go. Welcome to a video test on the Amazon Fire HD 10. Now we're behind the scenes over here recording and as you can see, this is what the quality looks like. You're also hearing the audio from the microphone of the Fire HD 10. This is a selfie video test on the Fire HD 10. With a pretty low light situation since the curtains of my room are closed, but overall I think it's doing a pretty good job and this is good enough for video calls. In terms of connectivity, it has Bluetooth 5, a headphone jack, and a USB Type-C port. Since it's not a phone, there's no SIM card slot or cellular connectivity. If you need to connect to the internet and don't have Wi-Fi around, you can connect your Fire tablet to your phone's hotspot or to a pocket Wi-Fi. The battery life is pretty good and it can easily last me two days with light usage on each day. That includes watching videos on YouTube, using Google Photos, Google Maps, Google Keep, listening to music on Spotify, and listening using Google Podcasts with the built-in speakers. For the software, it runs on Amazon's Fire OS, which is based on Android. Keep in mind that this tablet only comes with Amazon's App Store by default, but I was able to download the Google Play Store after following some online tutorials. That allows me to download apps that aren't available on Amazon's App Store. I think the most useful software feature is Show Mode, which changes the interface so it's similar to an Echo Show which is basically like Alexa with a display. Even if show mode is disabled, you can still access Alexa anytime 
and I find this really useful for controlling my lamp or asking questions. There are promotions slash ads on the lock screen, and there's a one-time fee if you want to disable them. Personally, I'm not too bothered by the advertisements since that's how to keep the price down, and the ads are well designed, plus they only appear on your lock screen. Now my overall opinion is, I think this is a great tablet if you're looking for an affordable device for entertainment, but don't expect to do any heavy gaming or productivity tasks. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. Feel free to leave a question, comment, or suggestion down below, and thanks for watching.